Good happy Thursday morning, January 28, 2021. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Thursday morning, so let's begin. First up, we're going to begin with the COVID-19 updates. New Hampshire's COVID-19 death toll now above 1,000. Number of cases continue to decline. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Our COVID numbers stand in New Hampshire tonight. As we mentioned, the virus has now killed more than 1,000 people in New Hampshire. 12 new deaths announced today. There have been 63,563 confirmed cases, and the number of current cases are dropping to just over 5,200. 223 people are being treated in hospitals. That's an increase of 10 from yesterday. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. COVID-19 in New Hampshire, what you need to know. Let's take a look at that information for all of you right now. And here is a check of that information for all of you right now. There are 63,563 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. 25,551,884 number of people in the United States have tested positive. 1,600 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 223 current mem number of hospitalizations for COVID-19 in New Hampshire and four twenty-seven eight forty-four number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. And let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where current cases of COVID-19 are. Manchester 506. Let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where total cases of COVID-19 are. Manchester 8,566. And let's take a look at these three charts here. Let's start with the first chart here. New cases each day in New Hampshire in the purple daily new positive COVID-19 cases. Orange, new hospitalization, and red deaths. Let's take a look at this chart here. Current cases in the purple total, current COVID-19 cases, and orange, current hospitalization. Let's take a look at this chart here. Total cases in the purple total, positive COVID-19 cases. Orange, total hospitalization, red deaths, and blue recovered. Let's take a look at this chart here. Positive PCR test rate, positive PCR and antigen test rate, and daily PCR tests. Let's take a look at this chart here. Age group of cases and female and male of cases. Let's take a look at this chart here. Infections, hospitalizations, and deaths. And let's take a look at this chart here. Deaths, percent of the population, race, size, ethnicity of cases, and hospitalizations. The mind are common symptoms, fever, lack of smell, cough, chill, difficult breathing, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. How it spreads? A prevention tip. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. Vaccination site confusion leads to cancelled appointments for some. Officials say those registering for Phase 1B should check to make sure site is public. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Amy Cabino.
stay warm, healthy, and rejuvenated in your own at-home sauna. Mainly Tubs is offering 10% off all in-stock Vinleo saunas. Their best-selling premium far-infrared saunas start at only $75 a month. And their best-selling traditional steam saunas start at only $105 a month. Plus, all saunas are eligible for special 0% 60-month financing. To take advantage of these offers by January 31st while supplies last, visit a Mainly Tubs showroom or MainlyTubs.com and start relaxing today. For 99% of the people, it's gone extremely well. For that 1%, it's been really challenging. Part of that 1% stems from some having trouble navigating the CDC VAMS scheduling website. New Hampshire's vaccine logistics manager Perry Plummer says the website incorrectly allowed people to pick vaccine sites that are only available for specific employees and not for the general public. The correct places say state of New Hampshire site. This is leading to cancellations and rebookings. It says on those sites, employees only or restricted, but certainly um, the general public doesn't fully understand that when they're seeing it, which is understandable. The state says they're helping people in those situations, and they're asking for help with cutting down on wait times at vaccination sites. Some say they've waited two hours for their shot. The state says they're adding vaccinators, and they're asking you to look for a VAMS email 12 hours before your appointment and fill out that paperwork before arriving. If you want to bring another person, you need to check the box that says you're bringing a second eligible person and only book one appointment for both of you. Also, you need an appointment to get the vaccine. Then we've had people show up at the end of the day and say, I'm in line because I know that I'll be able to get vaccinated, and it is absolutely not true. If you do not have an appointment, you will not get vaccinated, so please do not show up to the site. The state is currently working on its own vaccination scheduling website. In the meantime, if you have any questions, you're encouraged to call the 211 hotline. You can also find a list of the vaccination sites on WMUR.com. In Manchester, Jessica Moran, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Restrictions to remain at long-term care facilities as vaccine rollout continues. Residents, workers urge to be patient. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Andy Hirschberger. Quirk works for you at Quirkia in Manchester. Our dealership at your doorstep. This month, you can lease the new 2021 Kia Sorento LX for just $2.59 a month, and Quirk will deliver to you. Visit QuirkiaNH.com. As many long-term care facilities are well into their second round of COVID-19 vaccines, many are wondering when life can start to return to normal there. State health officials say while many indicators are looking up, those residents need to stay patient. It's going to be great when we get there. It's not, we don't, we don't have any of that clear guidance yet. Um, I, I really do envision some um, pretty radical change to our guidance eventually, yeah. Um, we're getting closer, but we're not there yet. Long-term care providers ask state health experts when they can resume things like normal dining or normal visits from vaccinated people to vaccinated residents. According to the New Hampshire Health Care Association, about 20,000 residents and long-term care workers have been vaccinated so far through the Pharmacy Partnership Program. Brendan Williams says about 40% of those workers declined the vaccine at first, but he sees that changing as second doses continue. I think they wanted to see how the experience went for their co-workers, and uh, they were hesitant about getting vaccinated, and so uh, they chose to uh, get their first shot So when their uh, colleagues were getting their second shots. And officials say while many of these workers and residents will soon be fully vaccinated, For now, many restrictions still apply. Even on these calls and other calls, we have um, repeatedly stressed that uh, even if somebody is fully vaccinated, that is not a free pass to travel. Dr. Chan says the travel guidance is likely to remain in place for a while while they learn more about new strains of COVID-19. Putting live Mandy Hirschberger, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and 
that report. Changes to primary calendar district could shift the political power right here in New Hampshire. Republican control of legislature could put incumbent seats in jeopardy. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Adam Sexton. Stay warm, healthy, and rejuvenated in your own at-home sauna. Mainly Tubbs is offering 10% off all in-stock Vinleo saunas. Their best-selling premium... While the state trains its energies and resources on taming the COVID-19 pandemic in 2021, this year could also see a dramatic reshaping of New Hampshire politics. The discussion formally begins this week with legislation to move the state primary election from September to as early as June. The New Hampshire state primary is one of the latest in the country, and it's in September. So this bill would extend the general election and shorten the primary. Granite State politicos have long lamented the current system, which can allow nasty primary fights to drag on for months. Winners frequently emerge politically weakened and drained of resources for the frenetic eight-week general election scramble to November. The late primary becomes a protection plan for the incumbent because the incumbent gets to message to the broader audience for much longer. Historically, Secretary of State Bill Gardner has opposed moving the state primary date. But several key Republicans believe this session they have the momentum and the votes, and now is the time to make a change. In addition to rearranging the calendar, the GOP majorities could also fast-track the redrawing of the state's political maps by passing redistricting legislation this year. Much attention will focus on the two congressional districts. NHGOP Chairman Steve Stepanek recently indicated the goal will be two safe seats, one blue, one red essentially leaving one of the current Democratic incumbents out of a job. Just last weekend, we saw the chairman of the Republican Party guarantee that Republicans are going to win one of the two congressional races in 2022. Let that sink in. The Republican Party is already calling an election two years from now because they know that they control the redistricting process. The maps that are approved either this year or next will define state politics for the rest of this decade. It is a political process and Republicans are expected to press the advantage they want at the ballot box. But the less competitive the maps get, the louder the accusations are likely to be of gerrymandering. So those same voters who voted for Joe Biden also voted um, to flip 50 seats in the House and four seats in the Senate. So. Um, we do have a job to do, and we're going to get it done, um, and we're going to follow the Constitution. In Concord, Adam Sexton, WMUR, News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Today, Thursday, marks 35 years since Space Shuttle Challenger tragedy. New Hampshire teacher Christopher McAuliffe among seven killed in explosion. Let's take a look at this memory video. The floor model clearance sale is here. Mainly Tubbs is discounting all remaining floor model hot tubs with over 50 to choose. Okay, and there you go. Thursday is the anniversary of the Space Shuttle Challenger tragedy. The shuttle exploded 73 seconds after takeoff on January 28, 1986. 
New Hampshire teacher Kristen McAuliffe was among the crew members killed on the Challenger. She was the first civilian teacher ever chosen for a space mission. Crew members Dick Scooby, Mike Smith, Ronald McNair, Ellison Ozuki, Judith Reskney, and George Javers also died. McAuliffe's lost lessons were finally taught in space in 2018. Astronauts Joe Akaba and Ricky Arnold performed some of the experiments from the International Space Station. In 2019, then-President Donald Trump signed into law a bill that will create a commemorative $1 coin to honor McAuliffe. Stock features flat after a steep sell-off on Wall Street. Apple and Tulsa fall after earnings. Stock features tied to major U.S. Qualities and equity indices were little change in early morning trading on Thursday as the market is posed to extend a sharp sell off aimed concerns about heightened speculative trading. Homeland Security warns of urgent threat to elected officials and government facilities. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. Meantime tonight, we are also following that new and alarming bulletin tonight, the Department of Homeland Security issuing a rare national terrorism advisory warning that Violent extremists could mobilize to incite or commit violence that they feel emboldened after the deadly riots at the Capitol. There's also news tonight that federal authorities have arrested a man allegedly found with five pipe bombs and dozens of weapons. What they say he was threatening to do. Here's our Chief Justice Correspondent, Pierre Thomas, tonight. Tonight, the nation on alert. Homeland Security issuing a rare, urgent bulletin warning. Right-wing militants and lone wolves may target elected officials and government facilities and were emboldened by the January 6th Capitol riots. Also at risk, critical infrastructure, power and communication grids across the nation. They are out there, they're angry, they're disenfranchised, they're upset that President Trump lost. Law enforcement on edge as the FBI races to arrest all those who staged the insurrection on Capitol Hill. The massive scale of the probe becoming clearer. 400 suspects identified. Hundreds more under investigation. Charges of sedition likely coming. Authorities continue to hunt for those who planted those pipe bombs and scores of other people who attacked police both inside and outside of the Capitol. Tonight, growing concern about other potential suspects who may also be planning. Today, the FBI announcing charges against Ian Rogers after authorities say they discovered an arsenal of 49 firearms and five fully functional pipe bombs. The FBI claims Rogers was angry because President Trump lost and was preparing for an attack, allegedly texting, I want to blow up a Democrat building bad. I hope 45, President Trump, goes to war. If he doesn't, I will. Rogers is suspected of being affiliated with the militia group The Three Percenters, a claim his defense attorney denies. Members of Congress now more certain than ever they faced a lethal threat. South Carolina Republican Congressman Tom Rice telling our affiliate WPDE... Tens of thousands shouting, hang Mike Pence. If they'd have gotten their hands on Mike Pence, they would have killed him. I'm convinced of that. And as the Senate prepares to put former President Trump on trial, Democrats continue to maintain that words have dangerous ramifications. Many pointing to Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, who they claim has supported QAnon conspiracy and other dangerous theories. This video posted on Green's Facebook Live in 2019. It has since been taken down. It's a crime punishable by death, is what treason is. Nancy Pelosi is guilty of treason. 
Pierre Thomas following it all today. And Pierre with us now because there's also news in another case tonight, the alleged plot to kidnap and harm the governor of Michigan. It, it would seem tonight one of the militia members charged in the plot is now turned, pleading guilty. David, that's right. We have the first guilty plea in the plot to kidnap Michigan's governor. Today, militia member Ty Garbin pleaded guilty to conspiracy, confirming that the plot to take the governor hostage was real. And David Garbin claims they were planning to place Governor Whitmer on trial. David? All right, Pierre Thomas live in Washington. Pierre, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And thank you for joining us for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.